Welcome third graders. We're on chapter 29. We're going to learn about Mary today. So, chapter 29, Mary, mother, our mother and queen. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. John chapter 19, verse 26 and 27. Jesus says these words from the cross when he gives Mary, his mother, to be mother of John, the beloved disciple. Uh, uh, the one whom he loved is referring to John, John the beloved, but he represents all of us that Mary is given to be our mother. Uh, especially, she becomes our mother by grace uh, when we be, were baptized into the life of Christ. So Jesus asked Mary, his own mother, to be our mother too on the day she and St. John stood at the foot of his cross. Mother, he said, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. With that, Mary inherited many, many children, the whole church. Mary actually became the mother of the church long before that. As a young woman who bravely said yes to God's plan, she was free to say no, but she wanted to do whatever God asked. Because of her trust, obedience, and love, Jesus came into the world as a little child. He became our Savior. Mary helped God keep his promise to his people. Her choice brought salvation and light to the world. God prepared Mary in a very special way for her role in our salvation. He allowed her to be the one person in the world, besides Jesus, who was conceived without original sin. In other words, Mary never needed to be baptized like all of us. We were born with, or with the effects of our first parent's sin. But Mary was born with no trace of sin. That is why she is called the Immaculate Conception. She came into the world already filled with God's life. That is why the angel Gabriel approached her with the words, Hail Mary, full of grace. So she was conceived in her mother's womb immaculately, which means without stain, uh, without blemish, so without any effects of any uh, remnants of original sin. So here we have a picture of Mary. She's, being, she's a queen of heaven and earth. She's our mother and queen. So the angels are putting a crown on her. And actually, she's the mother, and you might well, Mary, isn't Mary Jesus' mother? Why is she the queen? Well, actually, ancient Israel, the queen mother, the mother of the king, actually had the status of, like, a queen. Normally, we think of a queen as the, the wife uh, of, the, of the king. But in ancient Israel, it was the mother of the king who had the status of, of queen, uh, special status as queen, uh, and sat next to her son, uh, with kind of next to her son's throne. Mary brought Jesus into our world, and she lived her whole life without sin. That is why she holds the highest place in heaven after her son. Just as she brought Jesus to us, so she brings us to Jesus. Sometimes Mary appears on earth with a message from him. Usually the message is to stop sinning, to love God and pray. She tells us these things as a loving mother, inspiring us gently to be good. She wants us to be in heaven one day with her, and her and Jesus and all the saints. We are wise to ask Mary to pray for us, because Jesus always listens to his mother. His first miracle at the wedding feast of Cana happened at her request. She told him, son, they have no wine. Jesus had, no, had not planned to work a miracle that day, but Mary's request won over his heart. She changed, he changed six jars of water into delicious wine for the guests of the bride and groom. Just like the couple in Cana, we can go to Mary for help. We can ask her to tell Jesus what we need. Then we can patiently wait for his generous love to answer. We please God when we try to imitate the virtues of Mary. Mary's greatest desire was to do God, do his will. And she did it in every hour of her life. In Nazareth, she did his will by keeping a happy, comfortable home for Jesus and Joseph. At the foot of the cross, she did his will in quiet, helpless suffering. 
After the Feast of Pentecost, she did his will by helping the apostles build the early church. Now Mary is Queen of Heaven, but she still does whatever God wills. His will is that she remain a loving mother in our lives, leading us to Jesus, our heavenly home. And our heavenly home. So Mary's important role of she bring Jesus came into the world through Mary, and then uh, we come to, Mary brings us to Jesus, all right? So this importance of Jesus comes to us we, through Mary, and then we can go to Jesus by going to Mary. Mary brings us to Jesus. Immaculate conception, Mary was without conceived without original sin. And then because she was filled with grace, she was full of grace, full of the life of God from the moment of her conception. So the angel Gabriel said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. From the moment of her existence, God filled her with grace. Our Lady has appeared to children on earth many times. Each time, each, uh, each time she brings a special message to build our hope and faith. In the winter of 1531, Mary appeared in Mexico to a humble man named Juan Diego. In this apparition, we call the Mother of God Our Lady of Guadalupe. Mary's words to Juan Diego are meant for each of us. Hear me, my dear little child, let nothing discourage you or make you sad. Do not be afraid of illness, worry, or pain. Am I not here, your mother? Have I not put you on my lap and sheltered you in my arms? Are you not tucked in the folds of my mantle? Is there anything else you need? These words show us that Mary cares for us with the heart of a loving mother. If we honor and obey her, she will never leave us in this life. She will help us be happy on earth and find our way home to heaven. So Our Lady of Guadalupe went here to Juan Diego. Now it's the largest pilgrimage site in the world for Christians, for Catholics uh, and Christians. I don't know how many millions they get, how many millions they get that go there every year in Mexico City. Um, so what was the Immaculate Conception? The Immaculate Conception was a unique gift from God to prepare Mary to be the mother of Jesus. Mary was full of grace and free from original sin from the first moment of her existence. All right, so all about Mary. Mary, our queen. All right, our saint today is Saint Martin of Tours. Now he looks like a, he was a Roman soldier uh, who became a Christian. So uh, Saint Martin of Tours. Martin was born of pagan parents in what is now Hungary around the year 316 and was raised in Italy. The son of a, fa a Roman officer, he was forced to serve in the army at the age of 15. He was baptized at 18. On a cold day, the legend goes, Martin met a poor man, almost naked, trembling, and begging from people who passed by. Martin had had nothing but weapons and clothes. He drew his sword, cut his coat into two, and gave one t to the beggar. That night, in his sleep, Martin saw Christ dressed in half of the garment he had given away. At 22, Martin went to be a, a disciple of St. Hilary of Poitiers, France, and was ordained a priest. He preached throughout the countryside for ten years. The people of Tours demanded that he become their bishop. He became the most celebrated bishop of the 4th century and one of the great saints of France. He died in 397. St. Martin of Tours, kind of his charity and then his work on help building up the church in France uh, in the 300s. So St. Martin of Tours, pray for us and let's pray a Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.